Some, some, some nagging, a couple things, and um, he's been in a good place and better place this week. So uh, looking forward to him to be back at full strength and, and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, Missouri quarterback Brady Cook is completing about 63% uh, of his passes for 7.5 yards. And you know they got the uh, three talented receivers. So how does the Alabama secondary, you know, uh, just um, step up this week? You know you got got some injuries going on. So just yeah, you know I think this this time of the year uh, you, you start internal. Um, you, you know, similar similar type game when you know Georgia came in here. Similar type statistics when you know completing a high percentage of passes. Uh, I think Beck had not thrown a single interception coming into the game. Um, this quarterback here from Missouri has only thrown one interception on the season. 70% completion percentage. Really great job in an intermediate throw game, short uh, throw game. Um, you'll see them push the ball down the field. and They'll take their shots, and uh, so you got to start internal. You got to look at what we do well. We got to look at. Um, areas that we have to continue to improve on. We got to get healthy physically, mentally, all those things, and, and we got to put a plan together and go play. We uh, we know. I think at this time of the year, every single team is probably dealing with something. Um, you know, uh, maybe a guy down or, or or some type of adverse situation that they're going through. So there's a little bit of a next man up mentality. But I think you guys have heard me sit in front of you for a while, talk about depth for a long time, and I think uh, what you're seeing come alive right now. Uh, maybe like an 18-year-old guy, Bach, who just had his first career interceptions at Tennessee, um, but uh, maybe a month and a half ago was not wasn't wasn't you know maybe the caliber of guy that he's kind of trending into now. So we know that through the back half of the, of the season, we got to continue to develop the depth of the roster. Um, I think we're in a situation like most teams right now, where some of these guys that maybe were not starters at the beginning of the year, we're relying upon to have a, a meaningful reps for us. Um, and then at the end of the day, no excuses. We got to find a way to go battle, battle in the SEC and go find a way to go get a W. Can you elaborate on the skill sets that you see on film from Luther Burton and Theo Yeah, if you look at Luther Burton, um, I think he's going to end up being a high draft pick. Um, uh, very good uh, in the intermediate throw game. He, he runs your whips, your pivots, your option routes. He has the speed on the GPS and on film to take it over the top, uh, create separation. Um, you know, he's a he's a friendly target uh, for the quarterback, and they find ways to get him the ball and find ways to make sure he gets his targets and his touches. Uh, from a deployment standpoint, they do a good job of moving him around and putting him in all positions. He's, he's at the field one, boundary one. He's at both slot positions. He's the move guy on jet sweep. So they do a good job. A very, very smart coaching staff, a very smart football player to be able to align in all those places and still be able to operate and function. And they have enough right pieces around uh, around him uh, where, uh, where you know you start focusing on Luther too much and the other guys can, 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 can go and win as well. So uh, definitely a challenge. Uh, we definitely know how dynamic and explosive they can be and how, how much they've shown on offense. Um, and, and we're going to get ourselves ready to go. Is this a bigger week for Malachi from a communication standpoint because it's next man up at a couple spots? I think uh, you always rely on your veteran guys that have that game experience to continue to utilize the strengths that he has in football intelligence and football IQ is a strength of Malachi. So we're definitely relying on him to make sure from a, from a communication standpoint, uh, identifying who is in what position, who's doing what job. Um, they move people, they motion people, they create all the formations. I think communication is going to be a big piece and, uh, and, uh, and being able to line up, get our eyes in the right place, win the pre-snap, through three, through a clean progression and clean communication, and then be able to line up and do our job and play and win. Have you seen defenses put a lot of attention on Luther? You know, statistically, the production is probably not first round production necessarily. Yeah, I think uh, you know, anytime a guy has a really, really good year like he had last year, you kind of go into this second year and, and, and he's going to draw a lot of attention, which I think he has. Uh, you're definitely ident identifying where he is every single snap and knowing, uh, what, you know, you know what from a deployment standpoint where they're putting him um, and. And so he's going to draw a lot of attention. And, and I think that's why you're seeing some of the numbers of the odds, uh, other guys come alive, mm -hmm. where the ball has been spread around a little bit more to some other guys. Uh, uh, Weiss, number one, has, has done a good job for them all year as well. So we're aware of all the playmakers they have. And we, we certainly know we got we got our work cut out for us. We got to get ourselves lined up, get ourselves in a good space to go play and compete and win. When you see receivers kind of running free on some deep routes like you did last week, what is kind of your assessment of that? And, and what do you do in order to fix it? Well, I think every single coverage you run, um, you're always uh, starting with the four vertical throw game and you know who's responsible to be over the top. Sometimes on film, 
uh, maybe at the end of the play, it may look as if a guy is in the vicinity of a guy. Well, he's supposed to be there and be on top. Well, you got to know the entire coverage concept, how you're pushing coverages and who's really supposed to be there. Ultimately, we just need everybody to do their job, you know, and I think staying on the upfield shoulder, staying on the on the deep, uh, uh, on the upfield shoulder of routes and winning in the deep part of the field, something we got to continue to emphasize and, and, and put an emphasis on. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, we got to erase over the top and big, big, big shots over the top. So, you know, it's a piece of the offense. It's a piece of what people are trying to do. You got to stop the run. You got to win situational football. You got to win in the deep part of the field. You got to set edges. You got to make sure they kick the ball in the red zone. And you know, uh, winning in the deep part of the field is a big part of the off uh, what an offense is trying to do. Something we got to continue to take away. Would you say schematically, maybe those deep shots are something that uh, offenses think they're invited to take because maybe other things are taken away? Well, I think if you're playing post post safety spacing, sometimes and you know, it's you know, a lot of people on film right now. A lot of who they are is very evident. So. You know, if you're seeing some of these zone situations where people say, well, how can I get a guy at the scene, maybe? And we're always combating, trying to find ways to combat that, how we're, how we're leveraging routes, how we're staying over the top of things. So um, we know a copycat things will show up, show up at this time of the year. You know, a lot of September football, when you come out of training camp, you're using rules. People are still trying to figure themselves out. People are trying to figure each other out. When you get seven and eight games in, there's a lot of video evidence of things. And so, you know, copycat plays will come alive. And how do we combat certain things that maybe were a hole or, or a leak or something that we gave up over the top or in a run gap or whatever they may be? And we got to put things to bed. So, you know, offense is going to say now, okay, well, they, they, they've taken care of this issue. How do we attack them in a different way? So it's a back and forth. It's a chess match and chess, chess match. And we got to continue to, you know, show multiple variations of coverage on the back end and, and, and make, it, make it as difficult as possible for quarterbacks to find ways to, to get the ball over the top.